we thank you for your word. Thank you for waking us up and setting us on our way. Thank you, Lord, for all those who are here today to worship. May the word that comes from your desk be meaningful. May it touch some heart today. This we pray in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let the people say, Amen. Our text today was read ably earlier today. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. And it, it says thusly, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Behold, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Somebody said, this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press, come on somebody, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, we ask you to allow your words to resonate in our hearts. May we be moved by the expectancy of your coming. May we never look back, but look forward to the author and finisher of our faith. This we pray in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit, let the people say, Amen. Amen. You'll agree with me that the year past has been challenging. In fact, if we were to analyze some of the things that are a reality of what we experience today, we would say things like our phones are wireless. We're cooking fireless, cars are keyless, food fatless, uh, nobody is listening to me, or tires tubeless, or tools are cordless, or dress sleeveless, have mercy. They didn't hear that, Brother Rose. Or youth jobless, mercy. Or leaders shameless, or relationships meaningless, or attitudes careless. Or wives fearless. Sister Rose, you heard that? Husbands gutless. <laughs> or babies fatherless. Education heartless. Or valueless. Children mannerless. <laughs> we can call it nice words. Politicians senseless. Congress clueless. Masses helpless. Everything is becoming less, but still our hope is in God, and our hope is endless. Is that all right? Yeah. You know, as I thought about the sermon today, I captioned it, for whatever, backward never. I looked at that theme, and I thought it was Jacob Miller who coined it. You remember Jacob Miller, Killer Miller? You ever heard about him? He used to sing a song about what? Forward ever. Come on now, Frank. Backward never. But when I did deeper research, I found out that it was not Jacob Miller that coined these words. It was first mentioned by Dr. Kwame Nkuma, uh, Ghana's first president. Ghana's first president. He he tried to get support of his uh, parishioners by telling them, regardless of what's going on, we're not going to go back. Come on, somebody. And in 1957, Ghana became the first independent uh, country of Africa. And it was Nkrumah who uh, got these 
locals to, to get up and rise up and, and claim independence because he showed them a vision of, of a bright future and how important it was to break the shackles of colonialism. Come on, somebody. And move forward in faith to a bigger and better future. And so it wasn't Killer Miller. <laughs> it was Kwame Nkrumah. Today, my friends, I want to personally, as we begin this new year, challenge uh, Beulah to a brighter and better future. Uh, the past is finished. It's over with. Come on, somebody. Last year is in the rear view mirror, but today we need to move forward in faith. We are in a new era, a new year, and I want to say, see a fresh look from the saints of Beulah. I want us to move forward courageously and bravely, knowing whose we are. We know that with Christ in our vessel, come on somebody, we can smile at any storm. Yes, when Paul wrote these words, by the way, Paul wrote most of the New Testament. He was the greatest theologian that we have ever seen. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel. He was a wonderful mind. And at one time, he did persecute the Christians. But then he made a U-turn. Somebody say U-turn. And he began to serve God faithfully and well. Some people didn't like him because they didn't trust him. I'm sure if Thomas was around, Thomas would say, let me touch you in your side to see if it's really you. But, but thanks be to God, because of this man, we today can say words like, I, I, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Come on, somebody. Uh, because of his words, we can say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you ashamed? The words of Paul are poignant and, 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 and powerful. And he said he was even able to say that, you know, Jesus is more than... Uh, than, than wonderful. He says, you know, in Romans 8, he talks about, in verse 33 onwards, he talks about nothing shall separate me mm, from the love of Jesus Christ. And he, he mentions, shall this, shall that. But he says, nothing sh shall separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. I looked at the history of his penning of these words and recognized that when he wrote these words in Philippians, Chapter 13, verse 12 to 14, he was in Roman prison. He was in a Roman prison. He had, 10 years prior to writing these words, been the founder of the Philippian church. He had started the Philippian church. Somebody say amen. amen. He began the work with them. And during his uh, incarceration, the Philippians were supportive of his ministry. And so he decided to show appreciation by writing a, a, a letter to them, thanking them for all that they had done for him while being incarcerated and while he continued his ministry. And so he wrote these words 10 years later, having met them 10 years earlier. And he said to them, I have some friendly counsel for you as I now sit here in jail. You know, I know many people, if they were incarcerated, would not write any letter. They'd be cursing. Look at what I did for Jesus. Look at all that I've done for him. And now he has me locked up. Why does he come free me? But he was not doing that. He was excited about writing to the people that he had worked so hard with. And he said to them, I want you to know I haven't gotten to where I need to get, yet, get to yet. I'm not perfect. Now imagine a great writer like Paul writing words like, I'm not perfect. He was looked at as, as one of the creme de la creme in terms of theology, as leader of the church. He was respected and honored because of his, his knowledge of the word of God. You know, it's good to know the word. Somebody say amen. amen. In, 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 in 2024, somebody needs to start studying the word. Many Bibles are cobwebbed in your home. Not only the literal, literal Bible, but even the electronic Bible has cobwebs. You thought it was only the literal ones. You don't even look at the ones that are on your, you know, your, your phone, your Android, 
or your apple. You're busy looking at the stock to see if it's going up or down. Hello? Checking your 401k. You're busy checking, you know, those little clips from TikTok. I have never seen people so obsessed with TikTok and, and all these reels. Everybody's sending WhatsApp things. That before you know it, everybody has the same thing over and over. You get it five times because so many people are seeing the same thing and sending it to you. We are caught up with everything else except studying and learning and eating the word of Jesus Christ. I am saying today in our movement to the future, we must get back to the basics of studying the word. Somebody say amen. We've got to study the word again. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. And so Paul says here, I don't count myself to have gotten to where I need to get to. It's a dynamic process. I am still learning. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. I'm still pressing on. Come on, somebody. The upward way, new heights. Uh, I'm gaining every day. And so I, I, I want you to understand, I'm giving you some advice today, that as you move forward in a new year, I'm talking to you here in Beulah, like Paul is advising those of Philippi. He says, I want you to understand that you need to forget the past. Do you know that we can become so obsessed with the past that we don't do anything? There are some people who will boast for year after year that they were the ones that gave a pew. They paid for a certain pew, they, 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 a certain statue there, or a certain picture there. They paid for it. They bought the pulpit. And they talk about it every year, every day. This is my seat. You can't sit in it. They're obsessed with even the good. We're starting with the good here. That they don't recognize that they need to move forward. There's some people who are obsessed with, with what they have done in the past, and they have not yet forgiven themselves. They've come to the communion service, and they don't recognize that the communion service is a miniature of rebaptism. It's a starting over. Somebody says starting over. It's a refreshing. It's a, uh, you know, when you, you press default, is it default? Or something, and it, it comes back? Or you plug out the thing, and it resets itself? When you are rebaptized through the communion, you are reset and you should appear as if you never sinned before. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm saying here today that Paul is speaking to us. He's speaking to me. He says, forget the things that are behind. Too many of us are stuck on the things we did before. Some are stuck on the fact that we used to be ladies of the night. You know, somebody here may have been. Look so nice now, you would know, because guess what? God has washed away your sin, started you over again. I need for the saints of God to recognize that God can transform lives. You may have been a bum, have mercy. You may have been a, a, a sinner. You have been, may have been a murderer back in Barbados and Trinidad and St. Lucia. You may have been a, a, a bank robber. You may have been the worst of the worst of the worst, messed up. But when God got you and transformed your life, he put you on, on higher ground, and you're a different person today. Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah. Amen. A new year should be a new beginning. We need to, to, to forget the things of the past and move forward in faith because God is able. And so Paul says, this one thing I do, I concentrate on this only. I want to suggest to the saints of God today that for you to move forward successfully, you have to have blinders. I used to watch the, some of those horses. I didn't say I went to Commander's Park. I didn't go to Belmont, but I used to watch on television these great race horses, and they would put blinders, and I wondered why. And when I queried, I found out that it was to keep them focused so that they wouldn't see anything to the left or to the right. Come on. But they would be focused on what's ahead of them. God expects his children to be focused. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Hello. All things are passed away. 
Behold, all things are become new. You've got to put on blinders. You cannot let anything distract you from what's ahead of you. You know, for men who have great taste, a pretty woman can distract you. No, you guys got quiet on me. What did I, why did I touch that, huh? You want a lady who is anatomically curvaceous with a beautiful, gentle voice and lovely, silky epidermis. Mercy. Enters the room and the pastor is preaching. Some of you even forget that the pastor is preaching and look at the lady. And the devil knows how to get to some men. Hey, hello. And it's, it's healthy for a man to be an admirer of a beautiful woman. I get nervous if you're not admiring the woman. I, I wonder who you're admiring these days. Oh, have mercy. We're getting a new culture. Have you noticed that? It's getting sickening to see what's happening in the media. You're reading about some of these pastors. Hello? I'm not perfect, but I ain't doing them things. But, but I'm saying just think about what's going on today. You feel sick. You want to get a bath. Because of what's going on in the media world, in Hollywood, these men are getting together and doing some serious things. And, and we, we today have to just be thankful that we're exposed to the word of truth that allows us to not be down that slippery slope of immorality. Thanks be to God. But if you slip, I know God is able, come on somebody, to take you up and place your feet on higher ground. So this one thing I do, and, and some women are, are distracted by a lovely voice. You know, you wonder sometimes how a pretty lady marries a man that is not so handsome in her eyes. And you know why? Because his voice, you know, when he says, oh dear, of all the sugars in the world, you're the most granulated. When, 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 when the lady hears that, she, 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 she loves the words. Men are, are visual, women are, are what? They, they, they like to hear, auditory. And when they hear that, they get crazy. So not only men are distracted, but women. But when you think about the future of your life and where you want to be eventually, you want to be wrapped up and tangled up with Jesus Christ. When you think about the fact that this earth is not your home and you're just passing through, you've got to be focused. You cannot allow anything to distract you from the goal. Can somebody say amen? This one thing I do. Your resolution today must be I am leaving the past behind. Bye-bye, idolatry. So long, bye-bye. Lying. Come on, somebody. So long, bye-bye to stealing. Hello, the tithe and the offering. So long, bye-bye to gossiping. So long, bye-bye. Uh, adios, amigos. So long, bye-bye, grace. I, I'm tired of this stuff. I am putting it behind. I used to tell lies a lot, but I ain't doing it anymore because I have found my Jesus. And for 24, I am going to do more in 24 for Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. So you've got to have that resolution. You've got to make up your mind to have a New Year's resolution. Surpri surprisingly, 75% of resolutions will be continued through the entire first week of January. They didn't hear that. Donna, thanks for listening. The rest of them didn't get that. I said it, and they didn't get it. Let me say it again. Surprisingly, 75% of our New Year's resolutions will continue through the entire first week of January. Have mercy. <laughs> but only 46% make it past six months. The University of Scranton also stated that 39% of the people in their 20s will achieve their resolution year each year, while 14% of the people over 50 years of age will achieve theirs. Whatever your goal is, has to be associated with or must also be focused driven 
If you have a goal, you must write it down if you can. Because sometimes when you write, it, you remember it. Put it somewhere <clears throat> where you can remember that these are the things that you plan for the new year. Everybody should have some plans and projections and resolutions for the, for the new year. I know many of you start the year beautifully. Some of you say, I'm going to work out, I'm going to lose weight. And at the end of the year, you added weight. Have mercy. I'm going to join the gym. And you never do joined. And maybe you joined, but you wasted the money because you never went back after the first week. Am I speaking truth? Yes, many of you in the new year have planned to be a better Christian. You're, you're going to be nice and gentler. You're going to speak more respectfully to the pastor during the new year, and after one argument, you, you start again. The pastor has to be skedaddling to his office and praying. The elder has to hide from you. But, but, but Paul says, you need to persevere. You need to move forward. You, you need to, to press toward the mark of the high calling. Come on, somebody. Which is in Jesus Christ. I want you to know before you even get to, to, to that, 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 that Jesus Christ has plans for you. I love my Jesus because he only wants the best for me. He wants the best for you. And he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I, I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Somebody should be shouting hallelujah. Plans to prosper you. Amen. And not to harm you. Plans to give you hope yes, and a future. Almighty God, the King of Kings, wants the best for his people. I am so happy that Jehovah Jireh, uh, Jireh is there to provide for his people. He made you and he's going to take care of you. Can somebody say amen? Be not dismayed. <laughs> Whatever be tied. Come on, somebody tied. God will take care of you. We must press toward the mark of the high calling. And then Paul says that we need to go straight for the goal. There are many people who are like the children of Israel. When I studied the children of Israel's sojourn, having been uh, um, in the captivity for 400 years. When they went to get to Canaan, they went around and around and around, almost like circumlocution. They were supposed to get to the promised land, but they stayed in place basically for 30, 39, 40 years at the same place. I want you to know that during this year, we can't go in circles anymore. We need to go towards the mark. We need to go straight to our goal and our destination. Press. I press toward the mark. The research of this press uh, says that you run away from your past. Hello? And you run to the future as if the future is in captivity. You run towards it with precision and alacrity and dispatch. You're tired of what's happened in the past. You're tired of dwelling on the laurels of your great past or the, the, the debacle of your, your worst few fa uh, failures. And now you want to move forward. You want a new lease on life. One of the things that keeps us back is the fact that we are not clear-eyed about where we want to go. One who does not have a plan for the future has a plan for failure. Yes, yes. I don't think you heard me. You need to know who you are and where you're going. Which side are you leaning on? Whose side are you leaning on? You're leaning on the Lord's side. Amen. And ultimately, the word is true. I promise I won't be long today. I have a lot to say, but I'm going to stop shortly. He promises, if you press toward the mark, come on, somebody, that there is a reward. He promises to give you according to, as your work shall be. Can somebody say amen? amen? 
He promises to make sure that you are all right at the end. Christ wants not nibblers at the possible, but he needs grabbers of the impossible. Let me say that to God. God does not want nibblers at the possible, but he wants grabbers of the impossible. Behold, he says to us, I will do a new thing. What does he say? I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Not something uh, old we're talking about. He says, I will do a new thing. A new thing. I don't know if I told you this, but I can't remember when I told you, but I, I have moved because I made up my mind to be a new creation. I have moved out of Beggar's Alley, located at Two Poverty Lane, at the corner of Down and Out Circle. I don't know if I told you. Did I tell you, Brother Frank? I didn't. I, I really should have told him, Brother Frank. I didn't. I didn't tell him. Uh, as of today, I have a brand new home. I should tell my members. You know, as a pastor, I need to tell you that. <laughs> Sister Rose, I, I have a brand new home. My new address is Living Well on 231 Abundance Terrace. Oh, yeah. Located at the corner of Blessings Drive and Prosperity Peak. Are you with me? Yeah. Uh, it's full disclosure, full disclosure. I can't not tell my members, the Paris's, the, the, I mean, the, the, the Janice and her husband, they, they moved into a new house. But I need to tell you where I live so that if you need to find your pastor, you can find him. It's in the God Can neighborhood. Oh, yeah. no, they didn't hear me. They didn't hear me. It is in the God Can neighborhood. No longer will I allow myself to travel to the other side of town on begging Peter to pay Paul route. Located at the dead end intersection called I Don't Have which connects with the Boroughs Junction, Boroughs Junction. I no longer hang out at Failure's Place, near Excuses Avenue, uh, next to Procrastination Point. Uh, I have moved, hello, to an upscale community called Higher Heights, with unlimited potential and opportunities for me to succeed. Are you with me? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Life is good because God is good. Care to change your address? There are many vacancies. Great is thy faithfulness. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I am well blessed in spite of temporary circumstances. Don't tell God how big your storms are. Tell your storms how big <laughs> your God is. Somebody needs to say Amen, hallelujah. So I'm pressing on. I'm done. I'm pressing on. The upward way. New heights. I'm gaining every day. It's a new day for me. This is a new year. Things I used to do, I'm doing them no more. It's a new pastor now. The pastor you saw last year is done. I'm a new man. I moved up on the east side to a deluxe apartment in the skies. Higher ground is where I'm heading for. Come and go with me to higher ground. If you want to go with me in the new year, stand up to your feet. We're going to close in prayer. You want to go to a higher place. You can't believe I'm done so quickly today. But you got the message. We're going to forget the past. Forgive me if I hurt somebody here today. It's a new day. Can I be forgiven? Give me a new. Yes, thank you, darling. We're going to start a new page. Let's love each other. Let's fellowship with each other. Let's get ready to move up on the east side. I want to go to heaven, don't you? I want to be in heaven to bask in the sunshine of his righteousness. Is there somebody here today, you know I have to make the call, who's not baptized but you want special prayer. You would say, Pastor, please remember me in your prayer today. A little girl, a little boy, an older person, maybe you slipped up but you want to make a New Year's resolution. Uh, you want to start all over again this year. Raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to start all over again. Raise your hand for Jesus. You just want to start all over. Thank you, Auntie Grace. Is there somebody else? Yes, I see hands. I see hands. Let us bow our heads.
for prayer, dear God. We thank you for your goodness. You've been so good to us. We want to go forward ever and backward never. We want to press toward the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Keep us faithful. Protect us. Put a hedge around us so that no weapon formed against us can prosper. Transform our lives. May we give all to you as you give all to us. We look forward to a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. For those who have raised their hand, touch them and give them a transforming touch that will allow them to walk up the King's Highway along with those of us who have been faithful. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Give us a wonderful new year as we work and worship and witness. This we pray in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and name of the Holy Spirit. Let the people of God say, Amen.